Yeah, Laura, unfortunately, was sick and couldn't come. She was kind enough to give us her slides. I'm going to do my best to, to present her slides. I'm also aware that we're a little behind schedule, and I'm the only thing that stands between you and lunch, so I'm going to probably condense her talk here and there a little bit, uh, just so you can get out in time. Um, the goal of Laura's talk was to take the various models that you've heard earlier in this session and to use to compare them in a single cohort of individuals to compare and contrast the effects we see. Some of the models were high resolution spatially, some were low resolution, some were simpler, some were more complex, some were chemical transport, some were satellite. Does it matter if you're doing an epidemiology study? What kinds of effects might you get with some of these various models? Um, and so the models that Laura used was, uh, she used satellite-based models, two of them one at 10 kilometer resolution, one at one kilometer resolution. The one kilometer resolution was basically what you heard Joel describe. It, it's a very complex model, it has a lot of things in it. 10 kilometer is a slightly less complex model. It is based on, on ground monitors also. It uses a cluster analysis to impute data on days the satellite's not there, but it doesn't have chemical transport. It doesn't have a lot of other things that you heard Joel talk about. Uh, there were two chemical transport models, both of them based on CMAQ, one of them done by the EPA, and that's fused with ground monitors at a census tract resolution, and the other is what you heard Ted Russell talk about a few minutes ago, which is uh, based on 12 kilometer gridded output. So again, different spatial resolution in that. And then of course, they're all compared to monitors, ground-based monitors, uh, there's 41 monitors throughout the state of North Carolina, which is where the study takes place. So again, the research aim is to compare these and to assess whether uh, various health outcomes in a cohort of individuals I'll talk about in a few minutes, uh, how these various monitors and modeling approaches really look at when we look at epidemiology. Um, the other approach was to look at urban rural effects because again, one of the problems with looking at ground monitors is you have a difficult time with assessment looking at urban versus rural effects. Uh, the population that we look at is the population uh, of patients that went to Duke University for cardiac catheterization events. So all these individuals have active coronary artery disease. There are a little over 5,000 patients who, who had that event done at Duke between 2002 and 2009 and resorted to North Carolina. And so the patient information came from both the questionnaire as well as the medical records of the individuals at the Duke University Hospital. Um, the two endpoints that we're looking at are severity of coronary artery disease. And all you need to know about this is, is it, it's done on an index of a hun one to 100. And if an individual has a number greater than 23, the cardiologist considers that a clinically significant, significant event. So we used a binary indicator of CAD index either being less or greater than 23. And the second health outcome is a myocardial infarction uh, preceding the catheterization event. Um, I'm not gonna spend time going over in the description of these. We've already talked about them as is some of the other speakers earlier today. This is uh, what North Carolina would look like using Joel Schwartz's model that he talked about, one kilometer resolution. And again, you can see there's a nice gradient of exposure throughout the North Carolina. Um, you have various places where the population is not as dense, where, and you have other populations, particularly the I-85 corridor that includes the Research Triangle Park, Raleigh, down to Charlotte through Winston-Salem. Uh, so there's a nice gradient. Again, this is a one kilometer resolution. Uh, patient addresses were matched to the nearest air quality monitor, if we were looking at monitors, or the census track, and then the centroid of the CMAC and satellite grid locations. PM predictions were averaged for the year prior to each patient's most recent catheterization date. And so we actually took the annual average of PM values for each of the five data sources for each participant. And this is modification by urban rural status. Uh, the light gray area, which is most of what you see in the state of North Carolina would be considered urban using the uh, census tract urban rural commuting codes. The dark shaped areas are urban. And if you can see all those little tiny black dots everywhere, those are the individual cats and participants addresses. So if you just briefly look at, it, at the, the population as a whole, the urban rural, there's a few differences, but not, not that much uh, age, 
male versus female don't differ much. Body, bat, body mass index doesn't differ much. Race, there's a little more other. In this particular case, other is, is uh, Native Americans. Um, a few more blacks in, 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 in the urban area compared to the rural. Um, a little smoking, a little more smoking in the rural area compared to the urban. But in general, the two populations were not that much different from one another. Um, if you look at the actual annual average PM concentrations with the various ones, again, they're pretty similar. Since all of them are based ultimately on ground monitors, it's not surprising, but they all pretty much range from 12.32 to 12.79. Um, if you look at the correlation between the models, correlations vary between 0.6 and 0.9. The weakest correlation is between the 10 kilometer satellite model, which is about 0.6, and the strongest correlation is we might have expected is between the two CMET models, which is around 0.88. So in general, though, the models were fairly well correlated with one another. So if one looks at the results, <clears throat> one can see that looking at the CAT index, which again is severity of coronary artery disease, uh, not a lot of difference. The air quality monitor network, the AQS monitor, probably gave us the least robust result. But I'm not sure that I would say that going from one kilometer, 10 kilometer to one kilometer on the satellite really did much. And again, I'm not sure that going from the census track CMEC model in the 12 kilometers. So spatial resolution, we did not really see a lot of difference either in the CAD index or the myocardial infarction. All of the effects were pretty, mu pretty comparable to one another. One place we did see differences was looking at urban, rural. So if you look at the air quality monitor, you can see that in the rural location, we did not really see any significant effect in terms of coronary artery disease um, or with the CMAC model that was based on the census tract. And again, census tracts can get pretty large in rural areas. So in this case, the, the, the models that had high resolution, the CMAC 12 kilometer and both satellites were able to show effects both in the urban and the rural areas. So clearly it does make a difference what kind of resolution you have if you're gonna be looking at large populations that exist both in rural as well as urban locations. So a couple of things to, to think about. Um, one is that this was looking at spatial resolution, long-term annual averages. Uh, we may find different things if we were looking at short-term averages, looking at more acute effects there. We might see the resolution makes a bit more difference. And the second thing is to, to reiterate what Ted Russell was just saying. PM 2.5 is, is important, it's nice, but where a lot of people, including us, want to go is looking at components and more importantly, the sources from which those components are derived. CMAC models really presents an opportunity to do that, which is why we're working with Ted to really take these, this population and really understand what sources might be contributing to these uh, in various parts of the state. Uh, we heard Michael talk about satellite that may be coming also that's not here yet, CMAC certainly is. So, but in general, I, I think I was pretty happy to see that we got pretty comparable results other than the urban rural, which makes me feel like no matter what model you're using, as long as it's based in truth with ground monitors, you're probably gonna have a pretty good chance of, of having a pretty re reasonable uh, PM values to use for your epi studies. Thank you.